Bigfoot has been a part of American lore for years at this point. Bigfoot has captured the hearts and minds of hundreds of thousands of people who just want a sense of the wild back. Bigfoot is deeply ingrained in the American mythos, so much so people have made claims that Native Americans have stories of him, and they call him Sasquatch. Hundreds, if not thousands of people annually claim to see Bigfoot in the backwoods of America, skulking around. Some people are such diehard believers that they dedicate much of their life and free time to the pursuit of finding him, while others just aren't as convinced. So today, we're going to be looking at some of the many hoaxes of Bigfoot. I'm here to tell you guys today that I spend way too much time thinking of legendary hypothetical creatures that could live in the backwoods of America. On some real X-Files shit, I truly do want to believe. I want to be Agent Mulder in real life. But sadly... Fiction is much better than reality. I'm not here to try and debunk Bigfoot. That's a completely different video for another time, possibly. Today, I'm just looking at some of the many hoaxes of Bigfoot. Because there's a fuck ton of them, and I fell down a rabbit hole, and I felt like sharing. I had to put my hair up because it made me want to end my life. And without further ado, let's get into the actual content of the video. This first entry is one I remember vividly from my childhood. Let's take us back in the way back machine, all the way to the year 2008, where the cartoons were better, the candy was better, everything was all around better because you were a child. While you were being an 8 year old bum and not buying a house before the housing market crashed, somebody, some entrepreneuring people, decided they wanted to fake Bigfoot. Two people, two individuals from the backwoods of Georgia, Matthew Witten and Rick Dyer. These two individuals claimed that they shot a Bigfoot and they had the body frozen. These fellas, these comedians, claimed to have shot this Sasquatch. Not only that, they claimed to have seen multiple other Sasquatches around this Bigfoot. So they dragged our friendly neighborhood Bigfoot back and shoved him into a freezer. Needless to say, this wasn't fucking Bigfoot. On some Spongebob type shit, they got a seven and a half foot ape costume, glued that shit together, and shoved it in a freezer. Here's a photo of these geniuses' hard work. I remember being a kid and seeing this shit on the news. Reliving this shit and going back is crazy kind of wild, teamed up with another prominent Bigfoot hoaxer and cryptozoologist enthusiast, as his Wikipedia page states, Tom Bicardi. And these fucking chuckleheads were drumming up hype online. They were hyping up, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna release DNA of the Bigfoot. We, we got so much evidence of the Bigfoot. Morty, where's my, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. But the moral of the story is they went around building hype. They even had a whole conference, a press conference for this. Now, what the fuck was the point of all this? Nobody really knows. Nobody knows why they went around doing all this. Some people claim financial gain. Rick Dyer apparently ran a business offering Bigfoot tours. But like... That doesn't really make much sense other than that. Like, obviously, it's going to it's, it's going to be outed eventually that you just have a fucking ape suit in a freezer. To wrap this segment up, Matthew Witten was a cop, and he got fired over it because it showed poor integrity. W for the cops for once. As for Mr. Bacardi, who was along for this journey, he claimed he was also duped. He claimed that he thought the Bigfoot was real. But, I don't know, his history says otherwise. He's, he's definitely not, he's not a good player in the, the Bigfoot world. The suit is now on display at a local museum. 
Number two, we're going to be talking about the life and death of a couple Bigfoot hoaxers. These two are Raymond Wallace and Rant Mullins. Our story is going to start with Rant Mullins. This all is going to make sense in time where these stories merge. But we're going to start with him. Rant Mullins is considered to be one of the first original OG Bigfoot hoaxers. Rant Mullins and his uncle were being some mischievous fellows, and they decided for fun, why not roll big-ass rocks off a cliff? These rocks may or may not have hit a cabin. I don't really fucking know. I'm looking at some some sketchy Bigfoot sites to uh, put these stories together. But some forestry workers claimed they saw ape men throwing rocks off a cliff. This was just Rant and his uncle being... I don't know, fucking idiots. But hearing this from the forestry workers, this lit something inside him. A few years later, he made fake feet, which he whittled himself out of green alder wood. Here's the tree. He and his friends used to trick people who were out collecting berries. He would just walk around in the snow and the mud with these big ass feet. The feet he created swapped hands with many fellow Bigfoot hoaxers, and he ended up losing track of them for about 18 years. Over the years, Rant carved six more pairs of feet. You know what he did? He gave them out to all of his homies. He claims he is solely responsible for the legend of Bigfoot spreading all the way down to California. This leads us to Ray Wallace. Ray Wallace was a Bigfoot hoaxer who was building upon the groundwork that Rant Mullins laid. Ray was most known for his work in Bluff Creek around 1958. He made tracks around the Bluff Creek area. And this went the equivalent of 1958 viral. This flung the story of Bigfoot into the modern zeitgeist and created kind of the modern mythos that we know of Bigfoot today. He's just a big hairy ape man who leaves mysterious footprints in the woods. Wallace was a prolific hoaxer. He was also faking fake Bigfoot poop, and he was faking Bigfoot audio. He was really going hard in the paint with this. Ray and Rant knew each other. These two fucks had a bit of a rivalry going. Rant claims that he sold a pair of feet to Ray Wallace in 1957 for $150. I'm of the impression that some of this rivalry has something to do with, you know, Rant's jealousy towards Ray's success in being a Bigfoot hoaxer. This is all absurd. But yes, Rant stayed mostly unknown, whereas Ray kind of skyrocketed to, uh, you know, I guess fame. Not much fortune, but some sort of fame. Both men went the way of the dodo. Rant Mullins died in 1982, and before he perished, he did a little media run where he admitted to everything. Here's a little, little audio excerpt of him saying that he knew Ray Wallace. They would lead around the house from 48 to 57. Nobody had ever done something about it, uh, uh, but Wallace kept wanting them. I, right. Yeah. And I wouldn't give them to him because uh, I didn't trust him too well. But anyway, he kept after me. And when I went to Alaska in 57, I let him have. Ray Wallace died in the year of 2002, but he didn't come clean himself his kids ended up outing him. Wallace even claimed to have a piece of the suit from the Patterson-Gimlin film. Both of these men considered themselves pranksters. A bit of a jokesters, if you will. But all good jokes must come to an end eventually. Our final story is something that I found mighty fascinating. The story of the cripple foot. Yes, you heard me correct. 
there is a crippled Bigfoot, apparently, walking around in the backwoods of America somewhere. We need to get the, the king of cripples on this case. Where's Ricky Berwick at? Booga Wooga. Booga Wooga. Booga Wooga. Booga Wooga! Uh <coughs> this story takes place in Bossburg, Washington. During 1969, this area was a hotbed for apparent Bigfoot sightings. So this attracted many Bigfoot researchers. One of the researchers in question, Rene Dahanidi? I don't know how to fucking pronounce this. Dude is from like Denmark or something. Here's his name. He came into town after hearing tales of Bigfoot footprints. By the time he got there, all the tracks were basically faded. Didn't stop any of the researchers from combing through the woods for supposed hair, scat, or footprints. Rene ended up teaming up with another prominent researcher, Ivan Marks. These two individuals would find the tracks dubbed the Cripple Foot. But there's some suspicious, very suspicious circumstances leading up to the discovery of these prints. The duo were out one day. They were pulling up to a stream to search for footprints. There, there was a suspiciously parked jeep. Ivan hopped out of the car in a hurry and ran down to the stream. Rene didn't think anything of it. He thought maybe dude was excited. He thought maybe, I don't know. He, he had an adventurous spirit in him. But Rene, he was chilling. He was sitting there packing a pipe full of tobacco to smoke that shit and enjoy his day. Before he even gets to finish packing his pipe, Ivan runs back yelling, we need to get our cameras, we need to get our cameras, we need to get them, we need to go right now, because there are footprints there. Rene thought this was kind of odd, but he was like, okay, let's go get our shit. They come back, the Jeep is gone, and there is suspicious footprints laid. These tracks would later be dubbed the Cripple Foot. Some people have casted doubts on this find because Ivan would later go on and fake a video of the Cripple Foot. In 1972, he made a film that was torn apart by many Bigfoot researchers. This is the video that Ivan Marks created. This is the cripple foot. As you can see, it is absolute garbage. It is just a person in an ape suit limping around. It's absolute trash. Everyone agreed this film was actually hot garbage. But people like Jeff Meldrum, I'm sure you've seen him many of times in many different things talking about Bigfoot. He and other researchers claim that these tracks are still authentic even after Ivan created a fake film to go along with them. I think a lot of these people just be grasping at straws. And the idea of a crippled Bigfoot is very interesting. Final thoughts. Hoaxers will continue to hoax Bigfoot no matter what. People will also continue to believe that they saw him. Sightings and reports of a hairy man will never stop. The longing for Bigfoot is deeply ingrained in our psyche. With the wilds ever shrinking, and the magic of the wilderness slowly dwindling, Bigfoot represents untouched forests with magical creatures living inside it, with so much to explore, just like in children and fiction books that we used to read when we were kids. Thank you for letting me waffle on about an ape man that probably doesn't exist. Like and subscribe, please.